Here we have a stock 9B turbo off of my 3000 GT, you know, same thing with the Stealth. Um, <clears throat> and basically I'm going to be rebuilding it and I'm going to be sending it in for balancing as well. Um, so first off, getting it off the car, it's a real tight space to film and try to work, so I'm just going to explain to you. But basically if you picture it, your turbo is sitting on the car, this is the firewall here, in this direction. Uh, first thing you want to do uh, is get some room to work. So I suggest taking off the plenum, pulling the throttle body out of the way a little bit, um, and that's going to give you access to some of the bolts and things you need to get to um, to remove this compressor side as well as the turbine um, assembly um, from the car and get it out to be able to work on. Uh, so to start off, um, on the top here, this is the oil feed line, you're going to unscrew that top bolt that sits on top of this piece um, it's it's threaded onto the metal tube that comes down through. Make sure that it's it's the metal tube isn't turning and just that one piece is turning, because um, you can twist and bend that line, um, and then you have to replace that. Uh, next, you have the coolant feed and return on the two sides here, and basically it's just a bolt. Make sure you try to catch uh, these brash crush crush washers, um, but they I'm pretty sure they don't recommend reusing these, but mine are like brand new. I don't know if it's going to be a problem or not. I don't know if they get too thin and then don't make a good seal. Um, but once you have those two off, uh, <clears throat> you can unbolt the um, the wastegate. Uh, basically two screws here. And basically the wastegate works off the vacuum pressure and basically controls, um, well I guess it's actually depending on the amount of boost you're running, it'll bleed off air from the turbine side from that um, the exhaust side of your turbo housing, tur turbine side, compressor side. Um, so again, we're oriented this direction. Once you have all that off, you can unbolt. Um, this is the oil return line down here. It's going to be really tough to try to get up under here with um, your EGR valve if you still have that right there and everything kind of in the way. Um, so I suggest unbolting it from the actual pan when there's a gasket on there you're going to want to catch. Um, and once that's unbolted, you can try to get here, but you can you can finagle the way up um, up and out. Um, but uh, once that's unbolted, it's going to give this allow, allow this to have more play side to side, and then you'll be able to pull this straight out from the exhaust housing. So you have this here, and there's the exhaust housing on that side. Um, <clears throat> so just be very careful when you pull it out because you don't want these fins to get damaged. Once you have it out, um, you know, get on a nice working surface. And first thing you're going to do is get this large snap ring that basically sits around this inside portion here, down like that. Um, and what a lot of people do is a lot of times, I mean, I have snap ring pliers here, but a these aren't wide enough; they're too small. And a lot of these snap rings, they'll be, they'll have like little points that you can screw on the ends of them, but it's sometimes a little too fragile. So a lot of people do, and what I did is took a needle nose pliers and ground them down. Um, basically gave me a nice strong thing to work with um, to pinch this together um, and to get it off of there. Uh, be very careful, make sure you wear safety glasses because this is like pretty heavy duty. Um, it doesn't compress very easily and it gets under a lot of uh, tension and it wants to explode and throw itself somewhere. So be careful when you're removing this. Um, and what I found, don't think that you have to pinch it together and then pull it all the way up. You're really trying to pinch it together and then send it like kind of towards you. Get these, this portion here up above this lip and then just start to slide it towards you. Um, because if you try to pull all the way up, if it, if it nicks something, then it's going to fall down off of your uh, modified needle nose pliers, snap ring pliers, um, and shoot somewhere. Uh, so it's best to just pinch it and then just get it above the lip a little bit and then start to release it. Um, no need to pull it all the way up and out. Once you have that off, um, you can go ahead and put a 12 millimeter. All right, no on idea this side, why I didn't this show you this part, but basically and what I do is I thread. Um, is going to get and you loosen the eight millimeter visible. bolt on the compressor side, and then you just want to thread it on a little bit so it's kind of resting right on top of the compressor wheel. And then you can hold it between your legs and with um, extension in the eight millimeter socket on the end, you can hit straight down so that you basically send the 
um, you know, the turbine, the turbine shaft, and the compressor wheel, as well as the center housing rotating assembly, all straight down, um, separating it from the um, compressor housing. So that's basically the idea, and that's what you can hear me tapping right now. I'm hitting straight down with a hammer on the um, extension, but I failed and didn't show you. My bad. Okay, so basically you can see this pulls this pulls straight out from here. Um, next thing I want to do is I'm going to get this uh, compressor side off. And now I can take off the turbine side. Set that off to the side. Um, now I can go ahead and get this rubber O ring out of here that's not going to be reused. That's going to be in your new rebuild kit. Doesn't look too damaged. I'm hoping something's damaged because you know I'm hoping this is why it's burning oil. I mean, there's oil everywhere. And now you can see there's another snap ring in there. Um, for this one, I'm I can use go ahead and tell you right now that it this, didn't work well at all. Um, large. Just you know, make sure you have the right so tool for the job. Basically, these me. snap ring pliers I have are the ones that open out. So it's like for a snap ring that's holding something in and needs to separate outward to be released. Um, so it's kind of like backwards, um, but yeah, if you have the right tool, it's not too bad. You're just taking that uh, snap ring out, and then we can progress on. These are actually opposite, so not the best situation. Well, that was an extreme pain, but um, partly because I don't have the right tool. Just regular snap ring pliers should get that for you, no problem. Okay, right. so now that we have snap ring off, um, I'm going to take out this middle piece here. And basically there's a little lip on the edge of it. Um, so basically if you can pry from two sides at once, it'll pull it straight out. You don't want to go from one side because it's going to grab up on it. And it shouldn't take too much force. So I'm using a bottle opener and a screwdriver on opposite sides here. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle at it. Now we can remove the uh, bronze seal plate. Um, which this might be a little finicky. Looking for my little pick, so to speak. That'll come in the rebuild kit. Alright, now we have the uh, inner bearing. Um, and you'll also notice a inner O-ring inside this housing. 
Um, you know, I kind of stumbled my way through this, you'll, you'll tell in the video. Um, there's the actual other part of that bearing. Um, and that's because I'm following um, the 3SI how-to. Um, just like a lot of my, the things I do, I'm just following what other people have already done. Uh, so, sorry for that, but at the same time, just trying to give you guys a visual. Um, and then what's nice is I run into the same issues a lot of you guys probably will too. And for those of you who don't know, kind of know the process, there's a couple options. Um, a lot of turbo shops, what you would now do is send them just this assembly. Make sure you include the uh, nut on the end. Basically, it's what they need to um, balance it. And then when they get it back, they'll mark it so you'll know where to line it up. Um, if that concerns you, if you're concerned you're not going to be able to line things back up, um, I have talked to, I think it was Midwest Turbos, um, said they could also do it where you send this whole assembly and then basically once they balance it they'll slide it through here and screw it back together because the difference is you know you would just ship this versus shipping this as well so that they can um, kind of put it back together um, after it's balanced uh, but that's basically it uh, as far as dis disassembling um, reassembly is you know the opposite uh, order